from Obama scolding the wrong people. Yo, so I'm CJ Pearson, one of the young black men that President Obama yesterday tried to lecture to Joe Brown exposing Barack Obama. His adopted father, Lolo Sotoro, was one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. Was Donald Trump targeted? Some of y'all been real quiet ever since Trump got his $450 million back. Hey, it's election season. And you want to tell us how to vote? We're not having that. And we're not voting for Kamala. We're coming for you. Hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome back to Show New Trend. I'm your host of today and my name is Elvis Derry. And finally, 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 somebody had to say it. In every election, have you noticed that Barack Obama comes and tells the black people, the black voters, on who to vote for and who not to vote for? And not my words, but her words. Listen to this. I would really like to know why, when it's election season, Obama sees fit to always punch down on black folk and specifically black men. I am quite befuddled that somehow our community takes the rap for the Democratic Party's lack of reading the goddamn room. And when it comes to the conditions of black folks in the United States of America, no matter who has been in office or even held the majority of Congress, black people's conditions have stayed the exact same and in some areas have gotten worse. And then to use this trope as somehow black men just don't want to see a woman as president is absolutely insane. I have never once seen this party address white men and white women and their complicity in upholding the oppressive systems against black and brown folks in the United States. This is why I'm not mad at people opting out of voting because we have literally fought for the rights of ourselves and everybody else in this damn country and still the finger gets pointed at us. And at the same time, no one is ever willing to put in plans and policies that positively impact black people in America. A 22 year old by the name of CJ Pearson, who was among the young black men who are being degraded and lectured by Barack Obama to vote in Kamala Harris. This is what CJ Pearson had to say and just listen to where he'll be taking his vote. Yo, so I'm CJ Pearson, one of the young black men that President Obama yesterday tried to lecture She's supporting Kamala Harris just because she, quote, looks like me. Now, guys, I don't know about y'all, but I think that my ancestors fought far too hard for my right to vote in this country for me to support someone just because they look like me. Especially when that person who looks like me doesn't give a damn about me. Kamala Harris, throughout her entire political career, hasn't been a single thing for black people, black men, or anyone, actually, for that matter. She failed to secure the border. She hasn't created a single job. She is actually probably uniquely terrible at her job. Barack Obama, another person who didn't do a damn thing for black people when he was president, believes that black men should set aside our disagreements, set aside our grievances, and just take one for the team. Barack, we've been taking one for the team when it comes to supporting the Democrat Party for decades. And what do we have to show for? Our inner cities are destroyed. Violent crime is up. We are living in poverty in far many, too many communities across this country. That is the reality of progressive policies in this country and all across America. So no, Barack, I'm not going to support Kamala Harris because you said that that is my duty as a young black man. No, I'm going to support Donald Trump. The president who actually delivered for black people. Why about the lowest black unemployment rate in our nation's history? The president who actually gave a damn about our community. That's not rocket science, Barack. It's common sense. In the Bible, Luke 8, 17 says that all that is hidden shall come to light. Did you know the real history and identity of Barack Obama? I am surprised the same way you are surprised. What do you mean? Why are you attacking somebody black? For I said black people didn't put this up. They didn't have anything to do with this. Well, I heard I them planning. The Obama administration did. Well, that's it. Obama, what did he do for the black race? Nothing. Question you might ask: Who's the richest man to ever be U.S. president? Um, it's not Trump. No. It's Barack Obama. You know how? His 
adopted father, Lolo Sotoro, was one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. And when he died, he left a trust fund in Indonesia with three equal beneficiaries. Barack Obama, then known as Barry Sotoro because he was adopted, and his two siblings. So he has a whole false claim about what his background is. But when he got in the White House, he'd been working for a law firm that represented his daddy. He got lauded by Goldman Sachs, who financed most of his daddy's uh, American investments. He protected British Petroleum when they had to blow out in the Gulf because guess what? His trust fund had heavy investments in BP. So we get through this whole mantra and even uh, affordable care, Obamacare. You know who drafted it? Senior Tennessee Republican Senator Dr. Bill Frist when he was Republican Senate Majority Leader. Why? His family founded Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and most of the HMOs. His family's making a killing. So he retired from the Senate in 2010 when the Obama administration got passed his drafted act from 2003. It's his game. And I don't have any problem with Trump either. I'm looking at lowest black unemployment rates since Lyndon Baines Johnson, more money to historically black colleges and universities at any time since Lyndon Baines Johnson, I mean, more Americans back to work, you know, like, what did you get for the last three? Oh, oh, and then this, you know, that joke that they do about George W. Bush uh, feeding uh, Michelle candy. The inside thing on that is it's the same candy he fed her husband when he was six, seven years old. See, the Sotoros in the bushes go back 40 some years. Do you guys remember the fraud case in New York City where Donald Trump was involved and later on he won the case and he got his money back and surprisingly the state's attorney general's closing statements was this begging not to be sanctioned that means that they all knew what was happening they all knew what they were doing just listen to this Some of y'all been real quiet ever since Trump got his 450 million dollars back in case you haven't been following the fraud case in New York went in front of the appellate court. Even the banks came to Trump's defense. They said, look, we lent him money. He paid it back with interest on time. We don't have any problem. Trump's team said, hey, look, we borrowed money, paid it back on time with interest. There shouldn't be a problem. The judges pretty much said, hey, this was definitely an attack on a presidential candidate and can be seen as election interference. Y'all better get that man his money back. I think that the most interesting thing to note of all of this is the state's attorney general's it's closing statements begging not to be sanctioned. Yet another court case overturned against Donald Trump. I think that the state should pay him interest for every day that that money was out of the bank. I think the attorney general should be removed. Donald Trump and his team called this a witch hunt from day one. So what does this show you about Donald Trump? Personally, I can see a man of integrity. What about you? Tell us in the comments down below. The judges pretty much said, hey, this was definitely an attack on a presidential candidate and can be seen as election interference. A former Ohio State governor, Nina Turner, she was live on CNN and she decided to go off on Obama asking, why are you lecturing and degrading our black men? And she destroyed all the arguments live on air. Listen to what Nina Turner had to say. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? A tour of media to appeal to men. They need to appear, appeal to the needs of the voters. And so when I was a delegate for President Obama in both of his elections in Ohio, right now the vice president is down 11 points in Ohio, even though I, I fully expect President Trump to take Ohio as he did twice, but to be down 11 points compared to President Biden, that is a problem. But this other issue I want to bring up is a problem too. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? Now, a lot of love for former President uh, uh, Obama, but for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to respect it. So unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups, 
My message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who by and large don't vote much differently from black women. Let us take a short break. You're gonna be right back. Yeah, so guys, uh, this is the president of Tanzania, Dr. Samia Soluhu Hassan. President Trump must win to preserve the Constitution. He must win to preserve democracy in America. Yes. This man is awesome. Oh my God. Let's welcome a brusky Albis Deli. Is it amazing and comforting when you see our black mothers, sisters, aunties, girlfriends, and wives standing by the side of the black man and defending the black man? And this is what exactly I'm seeing on this video. It just put a smile on my face. Take a look. I want Barack Obama and every Democrat out there to know you do not own black people. We are not slaves. Our chains are gone. We do not owe you anything. And we don't have to give you an account for how we choose to vote. Obama is back on the campaign trail and he's making the case against Donald Trump. But before his guest feature in Pennsylvania, Obama made a surprise visit to Kamala Harris's campaign headquarters in Pittsburgh. It was there that he got candid, maybe a little too candid if you are in the vice president's inner circle tonight. He warned that Harris is underperforming him with black voters. And he had a message specifically for black men. So you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. So now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. He sounded like a slave master in that clip. Sounded like he was on the plantation telling a bunch of people who had run off they don't have the right to do something unless he gives them permission to do it. It's as if he's telling these people, you all just need to shut up and get in line. Do what I tell you to do. How dare you try to think for yourself? How dare you try to reason for yourself? How dare you choose to vote for somebody else who I say you don't have the right to vote for? How dare he try to shame people and tell people that they're misogynists if they don't vote for Kamala Harris? And you say that Donald Trump is the one who's denigrating black people. You are the one, President Obama, who is denigrating these people because you think that they don't have the right to think for themselves. And instead of respecting their right to choose who they want to vote for, you want to shame them into voting for the Democratic candidate. A former Georgia State Representative, Vernon Jones, was also not left behind after he saw and heard that Barack Obama has been lecturing and degrading young black men. And this is what Vernon Jones had to say about this. I, like many of you, observed and listened and watched Barack Obama last night as he addressed black men. But as a black man, he did everything but address us. What he did, he berated black men, he rebuked black men, he even scolded black men, primarily because we will not fall in line and vote 
for Madam Lock Upper Brother, Kamala Harris, because that's her record. As if black men are too stupid that we can't vote our self-interest, what's best for us, our pocketbook, our families. As if we've been immune to the past three and a half years, as if we don't know that gas prices have been higher under Kamala Harris, food prices higher under Kamala Harris, interest rates on home mortgages higher under Kamala Harris, and runaway borders under Kamala Harris. But you know what? That's what the liberal white Democratic Party did. They dispatched Barack Obama out there to whip black men back on the plantation to vote Democrat. And you know, President Obama, he meant a lot to black people, but he didn't do anything for black people. And for him to want to come down from his mansion in Martha's Vineyard and tell black men how we should vote, really? You don't even live in Chicago anymore. You left your black community, Barack Obama, and you want to tell us how to vote? We're not having that, and we're not voting for Kamala Harris. This clearly shows you that Kamala Harris, she's losing votes day by day, and it's just only a few days to elections. Things are getting hot, and things are boiling in the right direction. You left your black community, Barack Obama, and you want to tell us how to vote? We're not having that, and we're not voting for Kamala Harris. Americans, how can an immigrant come to your own country and lecture you on who you should vote for and how you should be thinking? This is unacceptable and is totally very, very wrong. The jig is up, Obama. It's time for you to pack your bags and leave. So they sent Obama to come get us and bring us back to the Democratic plantation. <laughs> he like it. They sent Obama back to come get us. He insulted us. He said, y'all, he is so, I was highly offended when he said the only reason we voting for Donald Trump is because um, we don't want a woman in president. So we come up with, oh, yo, nigga, shut up. Shut up. You don't speak for me. You don't speak for me. You don't speak for a lot of us. Fuck out of here. You going to tell us what we think. Yeah, come on, man. Who the fuck are y'all? That shit pissed me off, man out of here you gonna tell us how we need to think and what we should think man shut up man fuck out of here you gonna bring barack obama he gonna tell he gonna play us first y'all call us low informed voters uh, uh, low information voters misinformed voters now you want to come out and throw my mama in this shit that if my mom's was president i ain't voting for her. my grandmother could be my aunt. i wouldn't vote for them either and they got the same radical policies Shit pissing me off, man. Watching this video with this motherfucker, man. This dude gonna come up here and tell us how we need to think. Yo, get the f out of here, man. Go back to the White House. Or wherever you came from, Barry. Now you wanna address us like brothers. I ain't been your brother. Where would you at 2008, Negro? It seems that the people are not only angry, but also disappointed. Because when Obama was in power, he never did anything to the black community. All the promises he made, nobody ever benefited from those promises. Will somebody tell Obama that the jig is up? That we do know he is an anchor baby immigrant? That he is not an indigenous black American? That he's a Kenyan American? Okay? And that he, we, we, we don't need none of his lecturing. Okay? He don't need to, uh, to lecture indigenous black Americans, okay? Sit down, Obama. You don't need to try to blame and lecture black men because they don't want to vote for the v current VP. You're talking about Trump probably has never changed a tire. First of all, you don't look like you've ever changed a tire or have done an oil change your damn self. When you was in office, you gave to LGBTQ because that's who your donors was, and you gave to the Dreamers. You neglected the black people you claim you were from. Okay, so somebody please tell Obama to sit down. You're not in office anymore. Even Say Maine was not flattered on how Barack Obama talked to the young black men. And this is what our brother had to say about this. Well, wait a goddamn minute. So you gonna sit here and tell me that you a Christian and a Democrat at the same goddamn time? You some of go to church every Sunday in their praise of the Lord. If you let black folks tell it, they'll tell you they going to the hospital to say they soul. But God ain't gonna save your mother soul, bitch. See, a lot of you Democrats need to take a walk with Jesus. 
And maybe then Jesus will tell you that the Democratic Party is working for the goddamn devil. Yeah, you, you ought to be ashamed of your goddamn self. You see, that's the shit the motherfuckers are scared to say. You see, this world is already a cesspool. It's a ball of confusion. But don't let your ignorance and your hate for Trump make you make a dumbass decision. If you vote for Kamala Harris, you are agreeing to all of the bullshit. So do you think the Democrats should be ashamed of themselves? Tell us in the comments down below. Even Terence K. Williams, a comedian and founder of Cousin Tees, said that Obama, you know the king, owner, or ruler of the black people. Listen to what Terence K. Williams had to say to Obama. I'm giving everybody a fair warning right now. You might not like my language in this video, so move on if you have sensitive ears. And also, send this video to Barack Obama. Barack Obama, I need to holler at you. Sit down so I can holler at you and look at me when I'm talking to you, okay? So it took me a day to respond because I wanted to give you time to think about how stupid, how stupid you sound. When you say you are ashamed that black people are not supporting Kamala Harris and Barack Obama, do you do you not realize that this is America? You are a former president, so you should realize so you should know that this is America and black people have the right to vote for and support whoever they want. Black people have the right to support and vote for whoever they want. I have the right to wear this red hat. I have the right to support Trump. Black people don't have to support Kamala Harris. Who do you, Barack Obama, do you think people have to do what you say? We don't have to do what you say. Who do you think you are? You are not God. We don't have to worship you. You want us to get down on our knees and worship you and bow down to you, boy, bye. Do you think you are the ruler of black people? Do you think you are the king of the black community? Huh? No, no, no. You act like you own us. You act like you own black people. You don't own me. Okay? So be ashamed all you want. I'm not voting for Kamala Harris. My goodness. As you can see, Terrence K. Williams has made it very clear that he's going to support and vote for Donald Trump. So Americans, this is the right time to make the right decision. This is the right time to vote for the right person. A person of integrity. A person who fights and thinks uh, about his people. So Americans, do you want to make America great again? This is the right time. The power is in your hands. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. I'm your host, Elvis Derry. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.